Hi guys, just give me a second to post this and I'll get started. Um, go ahead and type any questions you have below. I'm about to get started, sorry. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> okay, go ahead and type any questions below. I had a really crazy night um, in dream school last night. Just crazy things happening. Um, I was just, I wanted to talk a little bit about, um, basically a lot of people are at different places um, on their spiritual path, but there are a lot of people that I'm reaching out to that are either in 3, 4, or 5D. Um, density, dimension. And when you're in the third dimension, um, there's going to be that polarity, that good and evil, that light and dark, that good and bad, that polarity. Um, right now, there's pretty much in 3D just as much light as there is dark. It's pretty like equal almost. So it's really important that you pay attention to the light. We all have light and darkness in us. We can all choose to go down whatever path we want. We can always choose to embrace whatever aspect of ourselves that we want. So it's really important that we're focusing on the light right now because this is the tipping point. And with just a few people, a few more people, light workers helping with this light, it's gonna tip, it's gonna tip the balance. And that's really what we need right now. So um, as tempting as it is to be focusing on, oh my God, we're probably, we probably just did start, we already have started World War III, whatever, these negative things, we can talk about the cabal, there is a lot of darkness, there are reptile shapeshifters, there's all this darkness, I mean, I can go on and on, but we really need to start focusing on the light and these positive energies. Um, I ha I do post all sorts of stuff on my page because I do try to reach out to the people in the third dimension still, even though I personally have evolved much uh, farther past that and I don't need that stuff. I'm still trying to reach people at every point, but um, I'm getting to the point where I'm realizing it's not really doing people any good. <laughs> like I'm kind of not really doing anything by doing that. So I myself am going to try to just start focusing more on like 4D and 5D and uh, try to get out of that. Another thing I want to talk about is um, who we are. None of us have really, I, I can say, uh, yeah, I woke up. I woke up like a year ago, but I'm not fully awake. I don't have all my memories back. I don't have access to everything. So yeah, I feel, I feel much more awake than when I was asleep and living unconsciously in the matrix. But really, I'm waking up to who I am. And I want to talk about who you are, who you really are. So um, who am I? Okay, I'm Robin. I'm from Earth. I've had a really crazy life. I can go on and on. It's really important that you don't feed into that because that's not true. That's not who I am at all. This, this life has not defined me in any way. These experiences have helped me so that I could grow and evolve, but that's not who I am. Ultimately, I'm trying to find out who I am. That's why I recommend everyone meditates, everyone goes within because you're going to find um, your soul in the same place you'll find the divine. So really, who are we? The question's so big that I don't think any of us have really tapped into that fully. Um, I do remember some stuff, stuff's coming back, but I haven't even figured that out. So um, there's going to come a point for everyone when you're going to meet your soul in a different body. That you're going you're gonna to evolve to a place spiritually where you're ready to merge back into one with your soul. You're ready to go back to one. And that's the goal. Um, how are you going to recognize your soul in someone else if you don't recognize it in yourself? So this is really about getting back to who we are, who we really are, who our soul is, where our soul is from, tapping into that. Because how are we going to recognize it? How are we going to recognize the divine in someone else if we don't know what the divine is? Or how are we going to recognize ourselves in someone else if we don't even know who we are? So we have so many roots here. Um, there's so many star seeds, angels, there's incarnated fairies, elementals, um, just, just such a mixing pot. That's why humanity was created. Earth, earth humans were created was so that, um, different celestial bodies could come to earth and we would have a universal body type because there's so many different, um, mixing of different, uh, basically races here. So basically we have a universal body and we all fit in and look like the same. So that's why these bodies were designed. But really, this is about getting back to who you are on a spiritual level. 
Um, so I want to talk a little bit and then I'll answer some questions. So please start typing them. I'm going to get to this. I also want to talk to you a little bit about um, where I am on my spiritual journey. So I guess you could say I might have started my spiritual journey without even realizing it when I was born, basically. My entire life, I guess, I was on a spiritual journey. Um, but I was also learning the lessons I needed to get to where I am now. So we kind of are like on a spiritual journey our whole life, but mine didn't really start until I woke up and became conscious and could really like tap into that inner knowledge that I have. And everyone has that knowledge inside of you. You all do. You all have amazing access to knowledge just by meditating and tapping into who you are. So it's also really important. Um, crazy things are happening when you're going to sleep. I don't know if you guys are noticing that you're having more vivid dreams. Um, you should be able to remember them easy, easier. Um, maybe like people are having astro travel experiences without trying out of body stuff going on. Just crazy things in the dream world. Know that that battle is going on there too. Um, I believe that the 3D battle affects me more in my sleep than here because in your dreams, you don't, there's not that free will stipulation. Like on earth, people aren't allowed to violate our free will. Um, it's our only gift and people have to be really careful as in, um, it can be like a downfall, but it's a good thing too. But in the dream world, there isn't that free will contract. That's why so many of us go to school in the other world. We uh, do lots of things there like um to keep evolving so just pay attention to your dreams it's a really good time um to get some information that way too um i'm gonna get to the questions now <laughs> let's see hi grace <laughs> shyla the pope was going to announce the consciousness shift months ago and he did not when is someone big in the world going to make the shift evolution a bigger deal in the mainstream media why would the pope want to do that why would he want to do something good for humanity? I mean, that sounds crazy, right? Because this is a church. Aren't churches supposed to be helping people and helping the poor and being a good Christian, I guess, Catholic? Isn't that about helping people? I believe Jesus was preaching that we should do unto others as we want done unto us, that we actually do have the power to make the world a better place. So let me ask you, is this institution really serving you? Is this church serving you? I want to use, um, I don't know if Megan's listening. She usually does at some point. I don't know. My friend Megan, I saw she was back in church this weekend. And then, uh, and I already can see how this is going to affect her. I don't think that I could be strong enough to go into a church every Sunday and handle that kind of brainwashing again. <laughs> I did as a child and I did all my whole life. But at this point, like where I am um, spiritually, I don't think I could sit there and listen to those lies and be told that I was born in sin when I know I was born divine. I wasn't born in sin. I was born divine. I don't know about all of you. <laughs> so I don't know if I could mentally sit through that and come back out and be the same person. So I see it's really extreme brainwashing. And the really sad thing is they're taking real events that happened and making, turning them into a negative connotation. Now I know I sound like I'm always anti-religion and I kind of am because these religions are not serving you. Do you know what it's called when you go to church? It's called loose energy. That is fear energy. And there are beings that feed on that. And one of them would be the Pope. They're straight, um, you can say not of earth, reptiles. They are energy vampires and they feed on our fear and anxiety. That's why they want you, second you go into a church, they're going to tell you that um, I'm a sinner and confess all my sins and I'll be saved. And they basically want to hear anything negative they can get out of you. They feed on that fear. And that's how, that's what woke me up, believe it or not. Um, I guess I'm like empire, vampire food because I'm an empath. Empaths take note. That's who I'm uh, attracting. So vamp uh, we energy vampires, they don't have that connection with source and we do. And they, they basically feed on that energy. So that really woke me up. I mean, I was living in a situation with a roommate that from I could be in my room with the door closed. I could be in my room with the door closed and across the house, downstairs, across the house, he would be sucking my energy out. <laughs> like so, um, and I woke up and obviously couldn't go back to that. But we were being harvested on an energetic level. Um, yeah, they don't they don't care about people. Why would they spend uh, six? I just read a thing where they spent six thousand dollars on a commercial for starving children. Why didn't they take the six thousand dollars and feed those children? Just think about these scenarios. What are they really doing? What are these institutions doing to make the world a better place? And I'm not limited to churches on my um, crusade, I'm here to dismantle these corrupt systems. I'm an indigo, I'm tearing them down. I'm helping tear them down right now just by talking about it, hopefully. So, um, and the question is ultimately, are these systems serving you? Is this Pope serving you? 
What's he doing to make the world a better place? Because all I see is your money, them taking your money and feeding evil some more. What are they really doing to serve you? What are these churches doing to serve you? All they are doing is hindering you because you're going to church and you're, you're, you're getting a high off of it, but it's not real. You're not doing anything. You're not doing any inner work. You're not doing any spiritual work. God isn't going to see you at, um, any better when you walk out of that church. <laughs> it probably just put you back 10 steps by listening to their brainwashing and that fear energy. You know what I mean? It just lowers your vibration all the way. Um, I can see I told her to stop going to church, not for religious reasons, but because she has a seven month old baby that's very sensitive. And this baby, um, he has like, it's called PKU disease where the blood, his blood isn't filtering right in his body. It's very serious. This child isn't spiritually strong enough to be in a church. He's going to get sick again, Megan, if you're watching. That's what the only reason. It wasn't because of my personal beliefs why I told you not to go into that church. I told you because that's really what's making your baby sick. Believe it or not, those lower vibrations are very bad for him right now. You need to wait until he's spiritually stronger and go back to church with him in another seven months a year. Wait till he's strong enough to be able to protect himself. He's not able to protect himself. And why would you need protection to go into church? Oh, I would need, I would need more than the usual white lights to walk in there. Are you kidding? <laughs> you are under attack the entire time in that building. I don't think you realize that. Why don't you pay attention to how you really feel um, the day after that or right after you get home? I bet you're drained on an energetic level. If I was gonna, if I was gonna recommend any kind of religion, wouldn't that be one that would uplift you? Wouldn't you want something that was gonna uplift you and tell you no, you're a divine being? We just get trapped here with all this stuff around us. I mean, from the time we're born, we're taught alcohol is great. Um, uh, they're, they're brainwashing children that basically, um, that's why there's a lot of this transgender crisis. Everything around us is screwed up. It's not even one thing limited. It's the entire hologram. And it's designed like that so that you can become a light worker and that you can change things. So we need this polarity to learn. So I have a lot of respect for it. Um, I have, uh, I had a couple negative entities on my page I wanted to address too. I guess I draw them to me with my light being so bright. And th those, those entities can't phase my vibration, honestly. But they can the other people that are following my posts and on them and stuff. So just be really aware of that. Be careful what you're giving your energy to. I leave those people on my pages. I don't care if they're of the darkness or in I'm of light. Because I'm so secure with myself. I'm not worried about it. At all. Trust me. That energy is not going to win this one. So I would think that um, religion, I mean, I, I do have a lot of like, I do follow a lot of teachings from um, basically like a little, a little from each religion. I can see where they all went wrong and every religion was basically distorted. Um, back in Egypt's time, the law of one was channeled and distorted heavily too. That's where all of our problems are coming from. Like that's where they started the one God and it went really drastically wrong. So right now, um, like I'm one of the people that are trying to help fix these distortions. So I can get into great debates about um, people in the, that were in the Bible, but I can tell you that that book was written to keep people stuck here. The people that are following those religions, they are not going to ascend off this planet. They're going to come right back their next life. It's called the soul trap. It will keep you stuck on earth, basically. Um, the earth is actually a school. And you're supposed to be using it to change yourself and to work on yourself as a person. And um, during this time, in case people haven't noticed, it is end times for some or a new time for others. It really depends on your perspective. But a lot of people are going to see the end. Ultimately, only 144,000 people are going to survive this. So um, that's really like a disparance of numbers. Think about that for a minute. So it's the people that are able to evolve and to grow spiritually. Um, don't let... This, any religion, don't let it um, keep you limited. You have to be able to have a completely open mind. Because um, ultimately the truth is bigger than any religion. So we're talking about something called intelligent infinity. That's what God really is. It's called intelligent infinity. And it is a source energy. And everything that you're seeing is made of source energy. There even doesn't matter. Someone could be evil, dark. They're source energy too. So there is only divine energy. Sometimes we don't know why things are happening, but I assure you everything is serving the divine at this point. It's just something bigger than we can grasp. So um, I don't even really like the word God because when I think of the word God or gods, I really think of a different group of entities. And there are many gods, so, and we're, but we're only supposed to be worshiping the one creator. So I really refer to it as source energy, intelligent, infinity, whatever you want to call it. 
So just be really careful. Um, these books, these religions were written a really long time ago to keep people in slavery here. We are living on a prison planet. It's supposed to be a school, but I call it prison planet. And you have bars all around you and you just can't see them. So it's really about opening your eyes, learning how to see these control systems and how humanity is being kept prisoner and in place here. We have political ones. We have religious controls. We have them all the way to the top. And it's a very small handful of elite running this planet. But big things are changing. Big things are happening. Changes are happening. Um, when is someone in the world going to make the shift a bigger deal in the mainstream? It definitely won't be. If it is, it's distorted. So I do see stuff about the shift um, being, being brought up. That would be more like, I don't like those teachings where they teach people that you're going to become a god. You're going to become a god when you're ascend. And like, they kind of like put like a negative twist on it. So there is like a lot of misinformation, even when it comes to stuff about the shift. I don't like that word. I believe we're all divine, but I'm not going to become a god. <laughs> so I don't really like that at all. Um, you have to be really careful with any information. But as an empath, um, I can never say your name good. Shyla, you really have this gift. You can discern between the bullshit. You can tell. You can tell. All of us are starting to be able to tell. These lies aren't going to work. You want me to tell you something ridiculous? Um, how about if anyone even tries to lie to me anyway, I could tell because I was always an empath my entire life. But how about now? Like, have you ever had someone like now that you have evolved a little bit past that 3D or at least a little bit out of it? Have you ever had someone like in your family or your friend lie to you, straight lie to you? And it's so ridiculous now. It's like, why would you, I, I tell my bosses, why would you even try? Like, why would you even bother trying to lie? Like, it's just ridiculous because everyone can tell. <laughs> we can see through the truth now. Okay, keep typing questions. Um, how do we sit when meditating, Nikki? I would say just like this. Um, honestly, with the little finger things. I don't remember. I took a class on it in college and um, I, I was very empathic at that point in time and I spent most of the class um, just sitting there uh, going in everyone else's heads and thinking about what they were thinking about because that's just how I work and I couldn't focus there were too many people in the room I could never ever do it um, I use uh, sex with my twin flame as a meditation personally so I don't really meditate like sit there and meditate but I would recommend that everyone finds some way to meditate there are different ways you can do it you can use your dreams as a form of meditation you can uh, meditate by sleeping I did uh, start to try to meditate a little bit and that entailed nap time for me, where I would just like take an hour out of the day and take a nap. So there are different ways you can meditate. You don't have to necessarily just sit there. If you're not going deep and you're not getting anywhere, then what's the point of just sitting still for like an hour like that? I did that in that class and I didn't go anywhere or get anything. So um, it's really like a personal thing. Like you can't, I also had someone write a post about, um, oh, there's people here that are going to enlighten people. They're here to enlight, help people get enlightened. You have to do that on your own. It doesn't matter what I say to you. It doesn't matter what advice I give you. I can shine the light on the path for you. But you have to do this work on your own. Ultimately, everyone's path is going to be so different. If I had stuck with what my family was telling me to do and taken their path and done everything the way that they did it, do you know where they are right now? And do you know where I am? They're stuck in 3D and I've evolved past that. So I grew up my whole life thinking my path was the wrong one. Theirs was right. That materialism path was the right way to go. You get a job, you go do the American dream, whatever. And ultimately, it's keeping those people trapped here. I also want to talk a little bit. Hold on, let me get a drink. About your ego. Um, you're going to, your ego is an I thing. It's all about myself. I. I, I want to do this, I this, I that. Okay, well, 5D is about we. It's about being one, and it's about humanity as a whole. So really, this shift is going to be more like a personal shift, where you suddenly, um, you can go ahead and keep following those ego-driven needs. Um, I did that. I used addiction. I used substances. I used money, material things, clothes, purses, um, shoes. I can go ahead and think of all these things I was feeding with that ego, and it wasn't satisfying me. It didn't matter how much money I had, purses, shoes, whatever. It wasn't going to satisfy me. I had a whole closet with like 70 brand name designer purses. Do you think that made me happy? Not at all. It's not ever going to. You can go ahead and follow that. I feel bad for the people that do that their whole life before they realize that. Your shift is going to be more about, am I service to myself or service to others? Because that's how we're going to get sorted. So, 
service to others what does that entail it might look different um, for everyone but really like you have to be service to others that's how you're gonna survive this if you're service to yourself you're not gonna survive so really just take a look at your life um, I see a lot of people my power my power my intuition whatever you want to call it my gifts um, it didn't start to really like unlock until I made that shift and could use it completely to help other people. If you're going to use it in any way for yourself, you will lose it. Like Edward Case, Edgar Casey, um, he lost his powers because he was channeling information and people were using it selfishly. Completely lost his powers to the point where I believe um, David Wilcock is him reincarnated and he came back this life without those powers. As in they were taken in a different life and he still doesn't have them back. So be very careful about your motives. Like very careful. Let's see. Should I listen to music? Nikki, you can. I really like um those, uh, I don't know what they're called. <laughs> bionic beats, I guess. I guess they're like bionic beats. Those are kind of cool. They're real trancy. They'll pretty much put you right out. So I could recommend maybe like some bionic beats. I do have um, some on my video page on my website. I do have some meditation um, videos that are really, really helpful as well as one on astro traveling. You can check it out at www.sparksofdivinelighthealing.com. There's a ton of information on ascension on there too. It's a little bit more organized than me talking. Stephanie, I love your videos. I'm trying to feel more and helping myself by asking questions. Like people asking mediums, what can I do to train this more? Um, I think I'm from Lemuria. Can you tell? You definitely were in Atlantis and Lemuria. I talk to you quite often. Um, and those were uh, higher levels of consciousness. Like Atlantis was fourth density. So this is very dense for us. This is very different than when we're used to. That's why you see a lot of illness. I know you're struggling with allergies a lot of the time because you're not used to your environment. Um, the best advice I've probably already given you would be to eat higher vibration foods and drink more water. Um, if you're attracted to mediums, that's probably going to be one of your gifts and you're still learning to unlock it. Just stay on that spiritual path and it will happen naturally. And um, you're already really service to others, so you're ahead of the game. So just basically keep doing what you're doing. Um... Nikki, crazy dreams. Yes, the veil, um, people say it's thinning. I say it's completely gone and it's a different ball game in the dream world. Trust me, I know all about it. It's a different ball game. It's totally different than here. Our reality here is going to start to appear more like the dream world too. Like we're waking up and it's going to start to look more like dreamlike. Um, people are talking about the mandala effect. Um, I, re I recall really good because I used to be a model um, that, what's her name? Marilyn Monroe, she was a size 14 in the reality I'm from, but people are showing her, depicting her as really skinny. I can go down that entire list of Mandela effects and tell you how it's different. Um, I remember one of them was JCPenney, and I remember the spelling of it because I actually worked for them when I was like a teenager. So I'm just going to tell you that the Mandela effect is very real. These timelines are condensing, moving, twisting around, and now you're starting to see the effects of it. Basically, I'm waiting for all of 3D timelines to collapse, and it's happening slowly. So um, I really I have respect for people on either side. People can be of light or darkness for all I care because I recognize that that polarity doesn't exist. It's not real. It's an illusion. So I really respect that. But you probably want to pick the good team right now. You probably want to be on light because otherwise you're not going to survive. So and um, negative entities can ascend. So that's why you're seeing these entities that are in control of our planet now. They did ascend. <laughs> they do have power. But they can't survive past the sixth density. They can't make it to the sixth density. They, they can't get past five. So think about it. You might want to be team light. Music helps raise your vibration. Yes, um, all music has a complete vibration. That's why I'm really careful about what I listen to uh, musically. Like everything has a vibration and has an effect on your vibration. So like, I don't know, some music will just like uplift my vibration immediately. It's like everything else. You want to start paying attention to how things in your environment are affecting your vibration. Um, I can tell you about total energy drains for me. One of them will be my other job. <laughs> total energy drain. You want to start paying attention to how people are affecting your vibrations. You might have toxic people in your life that are in your family that are ultimately draining you from afar. Be very careful. Um, the best advice I can give everyone would be to pray either just to Archangel Michael or the Divine to cut all of your cords 
Um, I've been doing this regularly, especially since we're using Facebook. Every time you're liking a status or commenting, you're putting a cord out to that person. And basically, a lot of people look like they're just wrapped in a million cords. Pray to have these cords cut. Pray to put yourself in white light before you have to go anywhere negative or low vibration. Eric, why do we feel pain and rejection and breakdown? 3D is about separateness. That illusion is very real. Trust me, that pain is very real. Like, like we really, we really believe this is the only reality we're in right now. And it feels so real to us. You get so wrapped up in these lives we're living. And you think that's your only worth. What about um, the people that, they're in these marriages that fall apart and they just, like, they fell apart. I know someone that's just, her marriage just fell apart. 30 years later, she's probably 60 years old. Her entire identity was wrapped up in that life. And now it's ending. Now what? Now what? We put our whole identities into the people that we thought that we were and that wasn't us. So what now? Well, look at it like a fresh start, but it can be very hard because constantly we're going through our life and um, things that are not serving us are going to fall apart. It might be people that don't have the best intentions for you, relationships. Anything that isn't serving you is not going to last. So a lot of times that process can feel like we're being punished because we don't have a good understanding of it. It really can feel like the universe is torturing you. You're being punished. I assure you that is not the case. Whenever, um, if you just want to get past that pain and rejection, you can do something really easy. You can go back to source anytime and be one again. <laughs> That's a choice. You have free will and you're using your free will to stay in that pain. Try going back to source. Try getting a better spiritual connection. Um, hold on. <laughs> Yeah, anyways, on that note, everyone should be drinking more fluids, too. At this point, I'm pretty much living on fluids, I feel like. I mean, just drinking a lot more because these energies are intense. Um, but on that note, I forgot where I was going. With that pain and rejection, um, that separateness, it's really an illusion. And what can we do? We're in the middle of a spiritual war, whether people like it or not. Um, I would know all about it. That's in the third dimension. That is where good and evil are fighting. So we're in, you're on the, a lot of you are in the middle of a spiritual war. What can you do? What can you really do? You're working on your light body. If you live in your light body, you're not going to feel pain the same. I can assure you of that from someone who had to, total full body pain um, from a catastrophic accident. I can assure you that if you live in your light body and you strengthen your light body, that you won't be feeling things the same. A lot of us, our auras are weak and... Our souls are maybe not even in our body. Our soul can leave our body here and go somewhere else because it's not going good or they just don't want to feel it. Our soul doesn't want to feel it. Just leave. Like a lot of bodies are just on like autopilot here with no soul in them at all. So you really want to get in touch with your soul because when you can integrate your entire soul into your body, amazing things can happen. That's what I've done is I have merged my higher self into my body. I completely killed my ego and now my higher self, that is me. And your higher self is a gift that you're going to get in the sixth density. So really just try to, um, to work on strengthening yourself spiritually. And we do need these bodies. It's a very physical place where we are. That's why I tell everyone to eat high vibration food. Take care of your body. You need it and you're going to need it later. Please type some more questions. Charlie, I'm sorry, I'm like my heart. <laughs> Charlie, how do I mean to know if I'm an empath, if I'm feeling my emotions or others from a distance? This was a problem that I had um, when I was, I, I would blame it on my family. Like I thought maybe being an empath was something I had inherited from my family and maybe they should have informed me better. But um, everyone started out being an empath and being psychic. Our planet is just really psychically polluted and from when we're young age, our societies are drilling that empath, that empath ability out of us as children. They're indoctrinating us into their society, which um, embraces being a psychopath, having no empathy. Those kind of um, traits are, they're uh, valued in a monetary way. So when you're a child, um, they basically use that to distort it. Just pay attention. When you're an empath, I can go in a room full of people and I'm going to take on a little bit of their energy and they're going to take some of mine. That's why a lot of time empaths stay inside, stay locked up in their houses. They don't like to go out in public. Just be really careful of who you're around energetically. Start paying attention to your energy. And the best thing I can recommend for any empath 
is sea salt baths. I literally take one every day to clean my aura, like to clean all the stuff out of my aura just from the work I do. I have to. Um, and nature, nature will remove any negativity from your aura. So pay attention to your aura. You're constantly taking on their crap. If I go to work um, with my boss who has a broken red chakra and a broken orange chakra, my energy is great right now, right? I could go to work and I'm going to I'm gonna take on a bunch of crap from those two lower block chakras. I'm actually going to almost, I could block, if it's a bad day, I could really block those two chakras on me just from being around him. So you're taking on their garbage. Um, as a healer, I also know I have to be very careful about who I'm healing. You can take on their karma. You can take if something is a karmic problem and they're they're learning it and I go heal them I will take on that karma. So pay attention to these things um, because this is everything is energetic everything Like everything you're seeing is more like vibration waves That's how our universe is made up. So pay attention to people's vibration when you're around them Good morning, Kevin. <laughs> it's early. I had a rough night I feel drained from the dream world, but I'm learning a lot. That's good. Eddie, why is it that I remember all my dreams vividly, like detailed, and I'll either wake up cold or with the taste of something I ate in my mouth? Um, you're going to start to be able to remember your dreams um, more and more vividly, and you're going to be able to use that to be like a place to learn, basically. The same rules don't apply as in the physical realm as in the dream realm. And our, our world here is going to become like almost like the dream world. So it's kind of like they're almost merging together a little bit, being condensed. But things are definitely changing. You're going to all start to be able to remember your dreams um, really crazily. Just pay attention to them because uh, they they aren't random. You, ha you were learning something. A lot of times we do different things in our sleep. We even can pay off karma. If you're lucky, you can pay off your karma in your sleep so you don't have to do it in this world. So for those of you that have karma um, and you know it, I would be asking your higher self, hey, can I maybe pay that off in the dream world so I don't have to have a rough time here? Um, if you have bad karma, here's a little life hack. You can um, call in St. Germain and uh, burn yourself with the, pilot, uh, the violet flame. Um, you can just really picture yourself being burned in a violet flame. Like that visualization will completely burn off any bad karma you have. Hi, Kimberly. <laughs> Charlie. Carly, I mean, sorry. Like right now, I feel heartache. Is it me? How do I know? Um, I know I can feel people from a distance. Not easy when you have chronic fatigue. Um, yeah, you're being drained energetically. Pay attention to maybe like, I don't know if you're in a relationship. Because if you are, it's that. If not, someone around you could be draining you. Like I just said, cut all your cords. Um, your heart chakra is blocked. Uh, it's something that you can unblock on your own. I, I really like recommend everyone try to unblock these things on their own. If it's not working, you could have some energy work done. Um, but I can like feel it just in reading that. But the best thing for your heart chakra to open would be grief blocks your heart chakra. So what kind of grief have you had in your life? Start to look at that and let it go. You're holding on to it. It's not serving you. You just didn't understand when you went through that what it meant. And you need to shift your perspective and look at that grief differently. Because people can never die. We don't die. Energy is not created or destroyed. We're never going to die. And the other realm is right here. And those that have passed are here to help us. So shift your perspective and know that you had to experience that grief to unlock your heart chakra. <laughs> Amanda, hi. How do you know you're on the right path? And where is all my money? Well, okay. You are on the right path. You're going to notice because you see synchronicities everywhere, like number codes. You're seeing 1111. You're seeing 222. You're seeing 111. You're seeing signs. I go outside to walk my dog like 20 minutes ago, hour ago, and um, my mom left me a feather and some stuff out there. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're going to start to open your eyes and see these signs better. Where is your money? Oh, man. Well, anyone who wants money is not going to get it. That sounds very service of self. What do you want this money for? To feed homeless, help people, or for yourself. It sounds like for yourself. So you need to really look at your motives. Um, if money is your motivator, you're not going to get very far. I would know that personally. Um, what are you going to do with it? Do you know that there's technology where we would have no need of money and that really money is preventing us from getting it? Like they have these replicators. I mean, you could replicate money, but what do you need it for? We have no need for money and it's money that's keeping us trapped here. So... What would you do with that money? 
because I'm looking at what you would do with it and it sounds like kind of service of self. So start to look at that deeper in yourself because ultimately that money would be keeping you trapped here and not happy. So it's the universe helping you. <laughs> but you could manifest that money. We can manifest anything we want. We live in a manifest reality. So um, if, we, if you think that if you're waiting for the universe to just like create the life you want for you, it's not going to really happen. It's not going to work good. You have to create what, what you want. We are the creator. Like we have to create it ourselves. So if you're waiting for like to win the lottery to get that money, um, you better manifest that ticket. And it's not going to work unless it's for service of others. It will never work. Nothing is going to work if it's for yourself. I see. Uh, I think it's really cool. I see like Sarah Prout with her manifesting thing. And I know a girl who bought it for $9.99. And um, I think that's really great. I love any kind of like spiritual stuff. But they're not telling people when you spend the $9.99 that this manifesting ritual will not work. It's not going to work when your service is self. Why would it? Completely not going to work. So I see their comments like, I don't know why I didn't win the lottery. I don't know why this isn't working. It does not work like that. So really realign what you're trying to do. What are your intentions? Because those that are concerned about themselves will be destroyed. And there are very uh, powerful entities everywhere making that happen. We need to be more concerned about humanity as a whole. 